Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Tosh Talks. I am Tosh. I am the book buyer for Book Soup, a bookstore in West Hollywood, which means Los Angeles, on the Sunset Strip. And as a book buyer, I'm sort of the gateway of bringing books into the store, and you, hopefully the reader, the customers, will buy the books and take them out of the store. That's our relationship. I bring it in, you bring it out, after paying for it, of course. And it's sort of like the ocean. You know, I'm the wave that brings it in, and you, the audience, my dear audience, pulls it back, back to the ocean. And I find it in the ocean, and I bring it back again on the beach, and then you pull it back. It goes on forever. And um, I try to find unusual books of sorts for you to keep your interest up, because you are a very fickle bunch of people, and rightfully so, rightfully so, connoisseurs, every one of you. And... Um, I like to think of myself as a fellow connoisseur, if I may, among you. And uh, one of my favorite poets is Frank O'Hara. And Frank O'Hara, his time period was like ooh, 1950s to 1966. He died in 1966. And um, O'Hara, while writing poetry, uh, worked at the uh, Museum of Modern Art in uh, Manhattan, New York. And he served in many purposes at MoMA. But he also was like, a, 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 I don't think he was a chief curator, but he was like assistant to the curator at MoMA. I could be wrong about this. But there's a gallery called Tabor de Nagy during that time that started in 1949 in Manhattan. And they focused, <coughs> excuse me, they focused on, um, on contemporary art of his time. And um, a totally a full-serving gallery. They had exhibits, monthly exhibits, but they also put out catalogs. And also they had an interest in, uh, in literature. And they had an interest in poetry, specifically the New York School of Poetry. And Frank O'Hara uh, was a, a key member of that group. And when I use the terminology New York School of Poetry, it's not like a private club. It's like, you know, they didn't call themselves New York School of Poetry, but him, John Ashbery, Kenneth Coach, um, uh, James Schuyler and uh, and even Ted Berrigan, which comes a little bit years later, is also considered the New York School of Poetry. And um, it's actually a group of poets who have a very much interest in the current contemporary now and also had a very strong relationship with the visual art world at the time. Uh, they work with, inspired by, and fans of uh, various artists of that generation, uh, you know, De Kooning, um, Larry Rivers, uh, um, Joan Mitchell, the, uh, the, uh, the artist, and um, what's interesting is they, uh, uh, and Lee Krasner, and um, what's interesting is there is the relationship between artist and, uh, and poet. And this has been going on forever, like, you know, you know the Surrealists had relationship with the, with the poets and the Dadas, and, you know, the literature and art, visual arts always go together. When they don't go together, it's kind of weird to me, and I usually not not much interested. You know, you, you want the full technicolor aspect of it. And definitely you get the full technicolor aspect of New York life, Manhattan life, with the whole visual art thing that was happening then as well, and how the poetry world was responding to the, uh, the visual art world. And uh, the most famous uh, book by Frank O'Hara now is uh, Lunch Poems, which is, was published by City Lights, uh, I guess in the early 60s, late 50s. And uh, these are books. Supposedly a group of poems that O'Hara wrote uh, during his lunch break. That's the sort of legend, that's the narrative, and it's kind of a romantic aspect of writing poetry during your lunch break. I kind of like that. I think a lot of people like it. Um, strange enough, Frank O'Hara has also been noted recently. You know, we, we had a spring of like, huge interest in Frank O'Hara, and I couldn't figure out why until I realized uh, Dan Draper in the Mad Men TV show was reading a Frank O'Hara book which made uh, the TV viewers interested in O'Hara's work. So that's kind of an interesting concept, uh, a TV show that sort of uh, pushed sales over somebody like Frank O'Hara. But nevertheless, um, most poetry books you get now are like selected um, poems by someone or the collected poems of someone, which means it's edited by somebody else. Uh, what's interesting, like the lunch poems, is get a book that actually Frank O'Hara himself or the poet himself put together. In a way, if you're a music lover like I am, you can always buy the best of something or a box set of somebody, like say, you know, uh, uh, Beatles' Greatest Hits or the Beatles' Number One. But it's actually more interesting to hear the Beatles song in its original context, meaning on the original album, 
if it's from Revolver or it's from uh, Sgt. Pepper, from Meet the Beatles or whatever, it's interesting to hear that song in the original context because that, to me, it has an, another, um, that setting brings more prominence to that song if I just hear it individually and in, in a collection that somebody else put together. So in that sense, this Frank O'Hara book is very interesting. It's called Frank O'Hara, Poems from the Tabor de Nagy Editions, 1952-1966. Beautiful portrait of uh, Mr. O'Hara. And these are basically three little books that O'Hara put together for the, for the gallery. And uh, the first one, he, I think he worked with, um, he worked with uh, um, Larry Rivers. And that is called A City Winter. And then the second book is called Oranges, and the third one is called Love Poems. And uh, these are like three separate little booklets, and if you find them now, they're extremely rare. I mean, they're probably, you know, um, i never seen them. Um, um, but anyway, uh, through Small Press Distribution, they uh, help distribute this, uh, this beautiful book package. It's very elegant. It's only $10. I mean, it's an incredible buy for this book. And again, it's interesting because you can get these poems in other editions, like the collected poems of uh, Frank O'Hara or the selected poems of Frank O'Hara. But it's nice to see the way this book was laid out originally with the illustrations by Larry Rivers and Grace Cunnington, another artist that, he, that O'Hara worked with. And um, it's just very interesting how this whole, how uh, you, you're seeing Frank O'Hara at its most original state, or close to it. I mean, this is sort of an anthology because three books in one. But you get a you get a close idea what how O'Hara worked with poem against poem, how he set his poem with the other poems, which is very important in my opinion. And um, I'm just going to read you a, a little brief poem by Frank O'Hara, <clears throat> one of my favorites. This is from Maché from the Love Poems, his last book he wrote, uh, from 1966. It's called Getting Up Ahead of Someone, Son. I cough a lot, sinus, so I get up and have some tea with cognac. It is dawn. The light flows evenly along the lawn in chilly Southampton, and I smoke, and hours and hours go by. I read Van Vichen's Spider Boy, then a short story by Patsy Southgate, and a poem by myself. It is cold, and I shiver a little. In white shorts, the day begun. So oddly, not tired, not nervous, I am for once truly awake, letting it all start slowly, as I watch instead of grabbing on late as usual. Where did it go? It's not really awake yet. I will wait. And the house wakes up and goes to get the dog in Sag Harbor. I make myself a bourbon and commence to write one of my, quote, I do this or I do that, unquote, poems in a sketch pad. It is tomorrow, though only six hours have gone by. Each day's light has more significance these days. And the beauty of, uh, of O'Hara's, O'Hara's uh, work is the sort of like a diary aspect of what his life is like. And he sort of comments on that when he's quote, I do this and I do that poems. He's sort of famous for that, I do that, I do this poems. Sort of like a list of things he did that day. And um, a lot of drinking, you know, <laughs> cognac first thing in the morning. That's a nice way to wake up in the morning. So it seems to be obviously very popular in that Mad Men uh, imagery of the drinking, working, and producing works. And uh, this is a great book. So it's Frank O'Hara, Poems from the Tabor Dune Nagi Editions, 1952-1966. We have it at Book Soup. It's also attainable from small press di- distribution, a great um, indie distribution that distributes a lot of like um, chapbooks and books of poetry of all sorts, and they're a great, great, great company. So you should get this. And this is Tosh Talks. Welcome. Bye-bye.